So, um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a PhD student at the University of Minnesota, but I have been working remotely from from Scotland since since the pandemic started, basically. Um, um, and I've been been living in Dundee, um, and I wanted to talk briefly about the ideas behind this project um, and what we're planning to do. And I'll show you a, a few of the materials that we've we've started to produce at the end as well. Yeah. So the 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 basic motivation for for this project started off um, during one of the COVID lockdowns um, when um, Scotland had a rule that you, you couldn't travel beyond your, your own council area. Um, and Dundee happens to have its own council area, which is very, very small. So we, we didn't have far that we could go. Um, and so all of us living there became quite, quite familiar with, with all of the local landmarks. We had two or three hills that we could climb if we wanted to get exercise. Um, and we were thinking a little bit about how we could um, um, increase people's knowledge and awareness about that small part of local landscape. Because um, while, while, while there isn't very much area, there's a lot of interesting features here. Here's a view from one of the hills. Um, and it's this landscape is actually absolutely packed with with glacial features and they're they're relatively subtle there's no lovely u-shaped glacial valleys or cirques or anything um, but there are glacial landforms everywhere in the shape of the hills um, in the shape of the small hummocks um, and these are landforms that, that were created by an ice sheet um, and it's even more obvious if if you Take a look from a from a satellite image. This is a low light satellite image, um, and you can see that the whole the whole landscape has been um, absolutely scraped by glaciers way back. Um, and it's also true for some of the main landmarks in the city as well. Um, Dundee Law um, overlooks the city, um, and it's an it's an asymmetrical hill with a steep western side and a less steep eastern side because it's got a tail of glacial sediment sitting on it. So the idea is that there are all these, these interesting glacial features that are giving us clues about, about the past of the area, but they're relatively subtle. Um, so a lot of people, um, having talked around a little bit, just weren't aware um, that these were in any way related to glaciers. The final point is that there, there's a lot of interest in, in glaciers and particularly in polar exploration in, in Dundee. Um, one of the landmarks of the city is, is this ship here, the RRS Discovery, which is an old Antarctic research vessel. Um, so the basic thought of the project is how can we bring this aspect of polar exploration closer to home without being able to travel? Um, um, what we then need to do is be able to travel back through time. Um, and travel back through time to when Dundee and the Tayside area was, was buried beneath an ice sheet. So here's kind of the ideas. The objective is to increase our local knowledge. So our target audience is basically everyone living in Dundee, adults and children. Um, and to increase their awareness and knowledge about the region's glacial past and how that relates to the current landforms that are there. And how are we going to do this? The idea here is to collaborate with a local photographer, animator and a museum to create higher quality visualizations than than I could do myself um, and actually create um, very nice animations of what what glaciers might have looked like in this area 20,000 years ago when it was buried beneath an ice sheet. And these are going to be hosted on a, on a, on a website dedicated to the project um, and are going to be part of a, a small exhibit um, in, in a local museum, the McManus Galleries. So I'll show you a few, a few images of what it would look like. So this is 
more or less what what Dundee might look like 20,000 years ago. Um, and this isn't very exciting, actually. Um, this is just the top of an ice sheet. Um, and for the most part, there, there were no, no landmarks sticking to it. So we've actually got to think a little bit about how we want to how we want to show this um, and show it in, in a way that's both accurate and that helps people understand um, what the situation was. So some of the things we're, we're thinking about is, is having blended views with, with part of the view being buried beneath the ice and part of the view being exposed so that people can see the location of, of specific landmarks, but still um, understand how they would have looked like when ice was present in the area and having cuts through the the ice so that people can get an idea of of the immense scale of it relative to to things that are present today um, showing showing the larger scale view um, and the extent of the glaciers um, going far beyond scotland um, and finally, uh, something I work with a lot in, in my science is satellite images, um, and we can actually use these, um, can try and find places today that might look somewhat similar to what Scotland would have looked like at, at parts of, of the last ice age, um, and use them to help with, with reconstruction. So here's one image from Svalbard and one from the Russian High Arctic that may look similar to what, what parts of Scotland would have looked like as well. Um, and as well as still photos, we're, we're putting together some, some video animations and I'll just play a couple of these. Um, they're, they're still um, in progress. Um, but the idea is that this, this is then a little bit more engaging um, to, to bring people in and, and make it an interesting topic. So that's just one showing showing the the scale of the ice sheet, um, and here's another one just showing showing the city with and without the ice present. So our plan is to put these various videos together into an approximately five minute long long video, both showing showing this and just discussing some of the <clears throat> some of the science briefly and how we understand or how we know that there was ice here in the past and how that relates to the present day landscape. Yeah. Uh, and finally, um, in order to get an idea whether whether this this has worked, whether this is actually an effective way for, for increasing people's knowledge. We're going to have a short survey um, to, to figure out whether this is actually helpful and whether people understand the, the glacier past better afterwards. So that's, that's me. Thanks for listening um, and keep a lookout. Um, we'll be sharing more of these materials online soon.